Here's what's coming up on episode 70 of the Big Seance Podcast. April Claxton. I have always wanted to reach people. So when Facebook came out with this Facebook Live, it was very easy for me to get a a message to, to people very quickly. And I have a lot of people that message me. When you multiply, you know, 20, 30 texts and emails a day with April, can you just tell me, am I gonna get this job? It's easier for me to do a 30 minute live video where I can answer questions and do readings live. And then, you know, it's easier for me to give back for free. Um, Everything I do is because of source. It is done through me. It's not of me. It is a very delicate balance. And, you know, my goal, in addition to being a psychic medium, is I'm April. I'm a person. And I have a family and I have a life and I have a path that I'm trying to figure out. And, you know, if I don't balance myself, my mind, my body, my soul, sometimes I do a really good job. Sometimes I flub it up a lot. But if I don't balance me, I'm not going to be a good intuitive. And I had a therapist say, April, you need to go to Overeaters Anonymous. And I was like, screw you. I'm not an overeater. And I was, I was an emotional eater. And so I went through a 12 step program, but they teach you some of the tools are meditation. All of a sudden it shifted. Something else was speaking through me in my journaling. You know, they don't ever want to talk about, remember that time you stole my money, you pole. They always talk (laughs) about, you know, they never say that. They always talk about those moments that took our breath away. Not the moments that we lost our breath. Welcome to the Big Seance Podcast. I'm Patrick Keller of BigSeance.com, and this is a place for an open discussion on all things paranormal, but specifically topics like ghosts and hauntings, paranormal research, spirit communication, psychics and mediums, and life after death. So basically, anything that pops up in my paranormal world. The candles are already lit, so you might as well come on in and join the sands man guys things are totally running on full steam here at the parlor i've been back to work for a week already um it's been really super busy and actually i shouldn't even say full steam here at the parlor because i haven't really been here in the parlor much at all but things will calm down here in a few weeks. And with that calming comes your host here getting super excited and planning for fall. But really, if you've been listening to the show for a while, uh, you probably know that since I'm back at school, for me, it means that summer is over and fall has begun. I know that's weird. I think it's a teacher thing. It's probably a little bit of a paranerd thing mixed in there too. In just a few hours, I'll be attending the Kansas City Paracon, and I've mentioned that a few times. And while I'm there, I'll be hanging out a bit with paranerd Denise Sia, who is going to take me on a little paranormal adventure. And I'm looking forward to that, and hopefully we'll have more on that here at the podcast later eventually i think i mentioned in the last episode that on april 24th i'll be a speaker at troy taylor's american hauntings fall festival in jacksonville illinois and i'm super excited about that for real well today i have a sweet episode for you we're going to sit down in the parlor with the lovely april claxton who is a psychic medium who I've been following on Facebook lately. She's fun. She's hilarious. And I think you're going to love it. Right after the interview, Tim Prossel joins us for Spectral Edition. And then we'll have some listener feedback. Thanks for joining us today. Here we go. Well, I 
am here with the stunning and lovely April Claxton. April has been called a gatekeeper to the other side, whose top priority is to serve by New York Times bestselling author Melody Beatty. I hope I'm saying that last name right. She's been featured on CBS Radio, Bio Channel, a and MelodyBeatty.net, and the best people we know radio. April is a valued psychic medium, paranormal intuitive, writer, lecturer, and intuitive counselor. She currently works with individuals, families, organizations, and groups worldwide. She is an inspirational teacher who has presented lectures, seminars, workshops, and classes throughout North America, and often works with adults and children dealing with abuse and addictions. In her radio show on Blog Talk, blog talk Radio in CBS New Sky Radio, The Movement Within Radio, April has taught her listeners, also known as her spirit posse and love ninjas. I, I love that uh, you straight up have a spirit posse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but she uh, teaches her listeners how to move from fear to love and live happier lives. Welcome to the parlor here on the Big Seance Podcast, April. Thank you so much for having me. And that was such a great intro. It was a really good introduction. <laughs> well, thank you. I decided to break my silence and go ahead and talk to you because I was so jealous of the breathtaking cruise that you were on just recently <laughs> that I just decided I couldn't talk to you anymore. So. I guess I'll put that aside for today. Seriously, though, how Thank was the you. vacation? It, you know what? It, I've been so busy and we have to balance. We have to have fun. You know, no fun makes April a really dull girl. <laughs> um, so it was a lot of fun. Very much needed downtime. It was a three day, two night to the Bahamas just with my you know wife alone. So it was wonderful. Just really, really good, good time. It felt really good watching it too. Like I was living it through the videos and <laughs> especially out of your room window. I kept trying to imagine myself in that room window, just watching the uh, ocean and pass by and trying to imagine you're on the Titanic. <laughs> yeah, we we made a reference to that. What I thought was really funny was laying in our bed. Um, <clears throat> you know, I guess I can't hang like I used to when I was younger. So we were in bed by like midnight, but we were... <laughs> It was horrible. We were going to party all night long. So in bed by 1130. But we were watching Shark Week. Oh, and um, I thought that was funny because a lot of Shark Week was recorded at Tiger Beach in the Bahamas, which was not far from us at all. Mm. So it made me a little nervous. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there in that water, but um, it was beautiful nonetheless. Have you been on a cruise before? I have. I've been on two other cruises before. The same one before we took our daughter, and then I was on a seven-day cruise, my goodness, back in 98, I want to say, 1998. If you could splurge and do a longer cruise like that, it's definitely worth it. Because the three-day, two-night, you know, you really cram a lot into that time. You know, you want to, you have visions of being on the deck and reading and that doesn't happen, you know, because <laughs> it's like you hit the bar, you hit the wannabe dance club, you know, you hit the casino and you hit your bed. So I have never been on a cruise one of these days. You have got to have got to. Yes, definitely look into it. I honestly do not remember how exactly I found you. I'm pretty sure it was on Facebook, but I started seeing your Facebook live videos. You do these amazing live videos and tons of people watch them. Why the Facebook live videos? How did that get started? I have always wanted to reach people. I've always, you know, I've done radio. I've always, I do speaking. I do a lot of workshops. So Facebook is really good because it's a great format to reach more people. And so I have a lot of my clients. I have a lot of my you know, business partners. I have a lot of people that I, I work with networking. We all follow each other on Facebook. So when Facebook came out with this Facebook live, it was very easy for me to get a, a message to, to people very quickly. And I have a lot of people that 
message me. You know, they're constantly texting me, emailing me, calling me. Everybody wants me to read them. And I'm appreciative of that. But when you multiply, you know, 20, 30 texts and emails a day with April, can you just tell me, am I going to get this job? It was easier for me instead of ignoring people. It's easier for me to do 30 minute live video where I can answer questions and do readings live, you know, than it is for me to do readings one on one with people. And then, you know, it's easy for me to give back for free, you know, because if I am answering your questions behind closed doors, it really is like I'm reading 20 or 30 people on, and it is a lot of time. So the, the Facebook Live is just quick, fast, you know, your followers are there. Um, great, great uh, format to use. But um, yeah, that's why I use Facebook Live. And I appreciate, uh, you know, that you try to get as many messages as you can. And it's very um, apparent when you watch your videos that you try to to answer as many important questions as you can. And it makes me think of, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I went to the Haunted America conference and there's was a psychic medium there named April Slaughter. Another April. Do you know April Slaughter? No, but that's kind of cool. I yeah. should go with that name. She- I, mean, I mean, like April Slaughter the second. No. <laughs> well, she uh, was doing a she was scheduled to do a seance that evening or one of the evenings of the conference. And everybody kept saying it was going to be her last seance and in the kind of opening remarks when they had the whole panel up there i asked her why this was going to be her last one you know obviously that's something i'm interested in and she (laughs) said it was simply the pressure she said she couldn't handle the pressure of everyone wanting a message and feeling badly when you can't get to every person yeah, and she said she just couldn't do it anymore. So she said publicly that was it, and I and I understood it after after she said that. Yeah, I've had a farewell tour, like share. I've had like fifteen farewell tours, <laughs> um, but I can't walk away. I've tried. Um, it's just you know, and that's why when you watch the videos when I go live, I always will say I'm doing about ten minutes, and I'm going to answer about three people, and it turns into twenty five, thirty minutes. And I keep throwing one more in and one more in, you know, it's just, you know, a lot of, a lot of readers, a lot of psychic mediums get such a bad rap for charging people. And, and I get that because how can you charge somebody for messages from source? However, you know, if we were not charging, we would be flipping burgers or, you know, doing other things instead of reading you, you know, holding that space. So I do like to give back. And in those videos, you know, it allows me to hit a good number of people. And a lot of people, they receive, you know, mostly in readings, you're going to hear exactly what you need to hear within the first 10 minutes. So, you know, it's important for people to hear that everything is okay, or here's where they need to go with this, or the decision that they're, they're playing with is accurate. It is good for them, you know, and, and it is important. I think there's been many times where I wish I would have had that support at my fingertips. Um, and I didn't. So, you know, I'm a sucker, I guess. I, and I, I just love the people I work with. Yeah. Well, one thing I'd like to point out about you is you seem to be so unique in the world of psychics and mediums. You're hip and cool. And I know people make fun of me when I say hip and cool, because that itself <laughs> is not hip. But um, anyone who follows you sees you out in the world having fun, socializing, you know, like we were talking vacationing. Mm-hmm. You go on fun investigations and take everyone with you. You're not the typical psychic medium that sometimes has this love and light, I am enlightened kind of facade. What mm-hmm. makes you so so cool and hip and relatable to everybody? So I, I get asked that a lot because evidently if you are a psychic medium, there is a box that you're supposed to be in. And I don't like to be told what to do. And, um, you know, we are all unique in our own ways. And I can't be what I'm not. So when people hear me, I do like wine, you know, I do love, I mean, granted, I have, I've outgrown my rave days, you know, it's been quite a long time, (laughs) but you know, I don't party like I used to, but you know, I do, I do like to go to dinner with my friends and, you know, I do enjoy wine. Um, you know, I discovered, I like different drinks. I mean, I'm not a lush, but once in a while I do like, you know, I like letting go and, But what people don't also know is that on the norm, I don't party. 
eat and drink. On the norm, I am meditating. Um, everything I do is because of source. It is done through me. It's not of me. It is a very delicate balance. And, you know, my goal, in addition to being a psychic medium, is I'm April. I'm a person. And I have a family and I have a life and I have a path that I'm trying to figure out. And, you know, if I don't balance myself, my mind, my body, my soul, sometimes I do a really good job. Sometimes I flub it up a lot. But if I don't balance me, I'm not going to be a good intuitive. So, you know, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that I think really good psychic mediums do. They have to balance themselves. They have to ground themselves. They have to breathe. They have to meditate. You know, I, I just, I'm, I feel very strongly about that. Now, do we have to wear white and chant? And I actually do that sometimes in my workshops. You know, I do a lot of mantras. Uh, you know, it's, there's, there's so many different aspects and I think that is so okay. We don't have to be in this box, you know, especially since I do a lot of paranormal work. I have a lot of people that say to me, how are you a paranormal investigator when you don't use equipment? Because I am the equipment, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I don't, I, I don't go in there. There's no competition. I don't have to have the top notch K2 meter. I just go in for fun. I love meeting people. I love going into environments, reading the environment. You know, people don't stay behind because they're happy. So, you know, just like the readings I do live on Facebook, going into a haunted environment is no, it's no different, but I love the paranormal, you know, people, whether they are in body or not desire to feel good. They all have a story. They all want to feel heard. So I just kind of go where I'm called. You know, I tell my guides every morning, teach me, guide me, show me the way. I try to be as authentic as I can. You know, I think a lot of us try to fill the shoes of what we think we should be doing and who we should be. Um, and we forget to wear the shoes that are our own. So if that makes me hip and cool, I don't know. I just, you know, I only get one shot at this lifetime in this body. Hey, go with it. Yeah. So how do your abilities work? What are your Claire's? Well, my sister's middle name is Claire, but um, <laughs> I gotta, I'm gotta. i actually going to use that with her. That's kind of funny. Um, I actually have all <laughs> of them. So we have, you know, clear audiences, clear hearing. And a lot of people, and actually for years, I thought clear hearing was me sitting in a room and waiting for a voice. But clear, clear audience is actually hearing that voice or hearing a sound within your sixth sense. So um, it's just, that was news to me a few years ago. But so you have clear audience, you have clear sentience, which is clear feeling. You just feel something. Um, you have clear cognizance, which is just knowing. You just know. Um, you have clear alience, which is uh, smelling. You have clairvoyance, which is seeing. And you have clear augustance, which is clear tasting. So I always make a joke that because of the smelling and the tasting, that's why I'm, you know, I have a little bit of a weight struggle because <laughs> everybody's abuelas and grandmothers that come through that are cooking, you know, I could taste food. So, you know, I have all of, all of those and not even that I have those because we all have gifts, but those are how source speaks through me for others. So I just am able to kind of tap into all of it. When did you know you had those gifts? Okay. So when I knew and when I, was playing with them are two very different things. I had always played with them since I was very little. I didn't know what they were. Mm -hmm. I freaked family members out. I freaked my mother out. When I was aware of, holy crow, this is what's going on, I was actually like 30, 31 years old. And it moved fast. It was like, whoa, this is what, wow, you know, let's go on this adventure. And that's when I started everything that I'm doing. And so that was 2008. Wow. Yeah, that's when I was aware of what this crazy stuff was. It seems to me, I'd have to go back and look, but I asked that question to, you know, a lot of the psychics and mediums I talked to, and it seems like that's a fairly common answer. You know, uh, very well into adulthood is when all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, this is this is what's going on. It It is interesting, you know, and I... Growing up, knowing there was something different, I remember watching Sylvia Brown, you know, The Claw. Mm -hmm. I remember watching her and just going, oh, my God, something makes sense, but I don't know what. And I remember watching John Edward. I remember being, God, 12, 13, and 
I would sit in front of the TV to where my mom would have to say, April, can you back up? You're going to ruin your eyes. <laughs> and I would cry because no one understood what I was going through. And here was this guy from, what is he, from Long Island or... or um, I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah, he's from, from, you know, not New Jersey, but he's from that area. And he made sense out of what I couldn't make sense out of, what I couldn't understand. And, you know, I've watched a lot of these individuals say that they they always knew it's just kind of a hunch you get. And then you kind of go on this this kind of research adventure because you're thirsty for information. You're thirsty to kind of bridge the gap to understand what, what is going on. I also find a lot of people awaken or have a come to Jesus moment after a very difficult struggle that they've gone through. I've also found that a lot of individuals who have experienced some sort of addiction and who have gone through one of the 12 step programs have also experienced an awakening um, and gifts that they also have as well. So, you know, it, it is interesting to see how it really is being awakened to who you are is what it is. So you mentioned um, or your bio mentions, you know, working with people dealing with abuse or addictions. Tell us tell us more about that. I'm, that intrigues me. So, yeah, I was always um, obsessed with food growing up. Always. And my parents got divorced. I'm very open about my past because I think that's how it connects us. You know, we all go through stuff. And my parents got divorced and I turned to food. I was 10 years old. And I also coming from a Polish, Italian, Catholic, you know, Irish family, um, we eat. And so I realized throughout all of the stuff that I had gone through is food was my drug. And so in God, 2007, I kind of had a little bit of a breakdown um, because no matter what, I had the wife, I had the daughter, I had the happy life. I wasn't happy. And I had a therapist say, April, you need to go to Overeaters Anonymous. And I was like, screw you. I'm not an overeater. And I was. I was an emotional eater. And so I went through a 12-step program, which is it's a forever thing. You know, It's not like you just go through mm -hmm. it and graduate. But they teach you some of the tools are meditation. And it's journaling. And I started journaling. And I have months of journaling hate and anger. And all of a sudden, it shifted. Something else was speaking through me in my journaling. And it was really smart and really sharp. And I remember saying, okay, I know this isn't me. So I think because I went through that, somehow, some way, Source brings people to me that are struggling with addiction, with children that have gone through domestic situations. Um, I deal a lot with individuals who are in the closet that have a hard time coming out of the closet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because whether it's realizing that you're gay and it's okay, whether it's, you know, I was abused by my dad and, you know, that changed me forever and I have to be okay with it, whether it's um, because of my past, I can't stop drinking or, you know, I can't stop using, you know, we all handle pain and, and suffering different ways and we all don't handle it very well. So those are the types of individuals that I find come to me for guidance and support. And I, I really think working through those things is a very beautiful process. You know, more people suffer on a daily basis with addiction and depression than I think people realize. Life isn't easy. It isn't easy out there. And we all try to handle it the best that we can. And some days we do really, really, really well. And other days we don't. And we do, we try to cope behind closed doors. Some of us overwork out. That's never me. Um, <laughs> you know, some of us overeat, some of us overspend, some of us um, deal with self love by constantly having sex with people. You know, we try to deal with life the best way we know how, you know, so it's never to fault anybody. It just gets to a point where you become aware that what you're doing isn't in your best and highest good. Is there a memorable or just simply awesome reading that you've had in the past that sticks out that you'd like to share? Um, I have been reading people professionally since 2008. 
I have done so many different readings, and I really think that each of them to me is special. I still, after all these years, I am so in awe of what comes through my mouth, what source shares through me, because I don't know half of the people I read. You know, even clients that are regulars, their life changes. And so, you know, when source says, hey, you're not meditating, you're not breathing, and the person just hides behind their hands. And, you know, when loved ones come through, um, they give me names, they show me how they've passed, what side of their family they're on. You know, I can't pull that out of my rear if I tried. So to experience that proof of the other side, the proof that we are loved and we are surrounded by our loved ones. They're never too far away. And it's not even loved ones, our guides. When I do most of my readings, your spirit guides know you. I don't know you. So when they are kind of chewing your butt out, telling you, you know, giving you all this information and you sit there and you go, oh my God, that's correct. It is just proof that you do have this posse that's with you, you know? So I think all of the readings I've done, you know, even today I had two that I did before the show. It's amazing just to hear how guides connect. I was talking to somebody yesterday and the mother out of nowhere said, you know, when you do pass, I'm going to meet you on the other side with hot dogs. And the person <laughs> laughed hysterically because her and her son the night before were just eating hot dogs and saying how much they really didn't like the taste of hot dogs. So, you know, <laughs> it's little things like that. You know, I had a grandmother come through. She's in her kitchen washing dishes. My client's in front of me. And all she could do is keep pointing at the soap next to the sink. And the soaps was ivory soap. And the lady started crying and she said, well, that's what her dog's name was, was Ivory. So, you know, it's, it's little things like that, that prove there's so much bigger than so much going on bigger than we are, you know, and it's not me. There's so many people that do this every day for the right reasons. And it's so beautiful to see really how, how not alone we are. Well, speaking of proof and and going right into I mean it's it's like you're intuitively watching my note sheet by the way with oh. all <laughs> you can't see it can you No no <laughs> with all of the messages that you receive and uh, the spirit contact that you make what if anything can you say confidently about the other side like what's life like over there based on your experiences I love this cuz I always say I'm going to write a book like I'm going to write a book there's even though all the messages are unique and different, there is no cookie cutter reading, but there is some similarities in some of the messages. And over the years, what I find is a common, not in every reading, and that's what I want some people to understand. Just because you're a medium, it doesn't mean that your loved ones are going to come through in every reading. And it doesn't mean that they're not there. You know, just because you're a medium, you can't just call the other side. So I have a lot of readings that are not mediumship readings. You know, they're readings just with spirit guides or so, so, you know, collectively out of all of my readings, I have found that our loved ones do not want to talk about the day they died. Mm. They will use certain things to identify how they passed. If it is important, they will come up with um, validation of what took place in the hospital room or who was there. They will thank them for decisions that their, their family members had to make on their behalf. You know, everything is symbolic and, and purposeful, but all in all, they don't want to harbor and talk about the day that they passed, which is funny because most of us only really focus on and carry that day around in our hearts because that's the day that hurt the most. So I find that very interesting. There is a light on the other side. There really is a light. More often than not, people that have come through different colors, different walks of life, different locations, I have seen the same light. But what's different and interesting is I really have found that when we check out to check in, there is this processing area. Like there's this area that we go to, to kind of readjust and go, oh my God, that was a wild ride. And I have seen in some readings where there's um, like a holding space and, and it's not like an airport. It's actually just a space. Um, 
And then I see this light and I see loved ones that show up in this light. And the minute we identify with them, that they are our loved ones, we have our angels and our guides, we go home. I have seen with individuals, um, there are some people that have passed where they went immediately right into the light. And I've seen some individuals who have not completely transitioned. And that is normally when I work in earthbound cases in haunted environments, because the energy is very different. When loved ones come through from the other side, it's very high level energy. When I'm tapped into individuals that are earthbound, it's very earthbound energy. So it's very different. Um, Guides and loved ones want us to drop the knock it off and have a good time. You know, life is way too short. And the only thing that comes through in all these readings are the memories. Mm. You know, they don't ever want to talk about, remember that time you stole my money, you hole. They always talk (laughs) about, you know, they never say that. They always say, remember that time that you lent me money. Thank you. They always talk about those moments that took our breath away, not the moments that we lost our breath. You know, and I think the message in all of that is, Get your head out of your butt. Live this life that you've been gifted. If you still have air in your lungs, then you have been given another chance to live it big. Follow your passion. Get out out of the way of your fear. Let it go. Most of us live behind our fears, and our fears paralyze us, which means we're not living at all. You know, you can't get it wrong because you're not going to get it done, so you might as well live it up. I'm not encouraging you to go and rob a bank. I'm not encouraging you to, you know, drink every bottle of wine that you have in your fridge. I am encouraging you to really enjoy this life that you're living, you know, and that's really what comes through in all of the, in all of the readings in a summary is it would be, would be the message and, you know, to breathe. I talk about breathing all the time. When we breathe, that's source energy, whatever your source is, whatever your higher power is. It could be love. It could be Mickey Mouse. I could care less. But the breathing is source energy. So as long as we are here, it's interesting that we automatically breathe. We don't have to think twice about it. Mm -hmm. When we go home, we don't need to breathe because we're automatically absorbed back in that oneness. That's beautiful. It's, it, it, it really is. And that's the stuff that I don't make up. That's the stuff that comes through in, in the readings. It's crazy. Are you still on a paranormal investigation team or even occasionally? Yeah, I actually do a lot of work with PRISM from Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do a lot of work with New Beginnings Paranormal in Tampa. Um, I'm also represented to do paranormal events with Raven's Rain Entertainment. We do a lot of events in Tampa. We just did an event for Paranormal Kicks Cancer for Childhood Cancer in Tampa. And then there's a lot of stuff that I do on my own, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I, do, I do a lot of work with different teams. A previous guest, Karen Frazier, who is a mm-hmm. psychic medium, she has, I will never forget this. I was actually listening to her show, she has, and she was talking about how very often psychics and mediums that are on paranormal teams get used as tools. You know, you were talking about the fact that you are a tool, you don't need the tools. Mm -hmm. And rather than being sometimes rather than being treated as a member of the team or an important member of the team, sometimes psychics are, are used rather than being a part of it. Do you have experiences with that? You know, I do. I think that's a really good question. And I, and I have to tell you, based on my experience, I have been doing this since I could walk. You know, I have been doing it professionally since 2008. I have worked within the paranormal field professionally since 2008. I've always played around with spirits and haunted things since I was little. I think, unfortunately, nowadays, everyone's a psychic medium. Mm -hmm. So I have found back in the day that if you were a psychic medium, you know, you were either there were some teams that really celebrated you and they wanted you on the team because they value you as a, a part of the team as equipment. And then there's other teams that don't believe in psychic mediumship, um, psychic mediums on the team at all. Mm-hmm. But nowadays I find that 
it's almost like authentic psychic mediums who actually have clients that do this work are not valued because we're treated just like any other investigator, which we really are. But being the tool, it's kind of like, all right, you're picking up. Now every, most teams have sensitives on the team. Everyone's sensitive. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, it, and it's kind of like I go along for the ride. I have fun. But, you know, I, I just I kind of got into it with somebody the other day um, and I was trying to explain that when you do this work, it's sacred work. You know, there there's a lot of respect that goes into this, you know, respecting spirit, doing the work that you have to do for you, not getting your ego involved. You know, so when you claim to be a psychic medium and you are at a paranormal event or a public event and you are not being tactful and you are being obtrusive and rude, you know, that actually gives uh, other psychic mediums are really bad name. And I would have to say, you know, if, you know, going into, and sure, I'm going to probably piss people off with this, this statement, but I really think those of us that do this work day in, day out, you know, I work a full-time job and I do this full-time on the side. I do this nights and weekends and I've done it, like I said, since 2008. So, you know, there are things that you have to do to maintain, to do this work. You're always growing. You're always expanding. You're always cleaning up and balancing your own stuff. There's a, there's a humbleness or a humility that goes into this. And, you know, nowadays everybody's an intuitive, everybody's psychic, everybody's a medium, which we all are. But if you're not doing the work, if you're not respecting that part of you, you know, don't do it. Don't do it, please, because going into haunted environments on paranormal teams, these are people. These are people. These are people's children. These are husbands and wives and grandparents. Most of them have been murdered or they've been they've done the murdering or they were raped. You know, this is not the time and place to walk in there with your cape and boast about being the psychic medium. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a lot of respect that comes with this, a lot of responsibility that comes with this. So. That's how I would answer that. I'm sure I probably upset a bunch of people, but, you know, this is the world, my world, according to me and my experience. But yeah, I mean, I, I kind of wish, I just wish everybody got along. You know, there's so much going on in the paranormal world and there's so much talent and there's so many people that have such good intentions and good hearts. And I just wish that all of us would listen to each other and respect each other. And, you know, there's a beautiful thing called constructive criticism, you know, and a lot of us don't take that well, you know, and we're all human. And as long as we're human, we're going to mess it up. But, um, yeah, that's probably a topic for another, another show. (laughs) (laughs) No, I respect the honesty a lot. And, you know, I myself will sometimes, roll my eyes when you're in a situation or even if you're just, you know, I had a brief moment where I was at a paranormal investigation team, but when you're uh, doing more of the touristy things for fun and Mm -hmm. uh, yet, you know, every other person is raising their hand, trying to run the show saying they're (laughs) a psychic medium. And Mm -hmm. sometimes I roll my eyes. I'm just like, okay, but you know, let's, let's move on. I, and I know, you know what? I normally I let him have it because I believe in karma. And you know what? And then who am I to judge? Maybe this is a situation that they're learning on, you know, because we all are learning. Mm-hmm. But then there's moments where I just want to say, please, you know, back away, back away. <laughs> um, you know, but we are, we are all learning. It, it's very hard to judge, it's very hard to not judge. Again, it is a balance. Um, we do all, myself included, we all should check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. But, you know, there is more than enough to go around. There's more than enough money. There's more than enough opportunity. There's more than enough abundance. There's more than enough haunted locations. You know, people forget that the law of attraction is real. And as long as we keep saying, well, that person took that event and that, you know, there's no more to go around. Well, that's what we're going to experience. We're going to keep ourselves locked in. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't believe in that. You know, I believe in abundance. I believe that there is enough for all of us. You know, if somebody else, if you're at an event and someone else wants to shine, let them shine. Maybe that's their moment. Maybe that's the only moment they will ever have. And you worry about you. Go back to you doing you. 
you know, I just, it happens all too often at way too many events and we've lost track of why we come together to do these events. Yeah, I guess it's complicated when for many people, it's a hobby for many people, it's a profession Mm -hmm. yet. It's not, you know, you don't get a certificate in most of this stuff. You don't get a, a degree in most of this stuff and it's still not even accepted by everyone that this paranormal stuff is, is serious. So that's complicated. I think the certificate is a TV show. I think so many people want their own show. And, and you know, and I got, I understand that because if you make it to a show, then what you're doing is credible. The hard work that you do, whatever formula of investigating that you've created, it's working, but that's not always the case. You know, it's, there's so many people that do investigations that are good. They're really good at what they do, whether they have a show or not. And then the truth is, if you believe in the law of attraction, then you're going to get a show anyway. So, you know, it, it really is relax, chillax, and have fun with the process. Don't burn your bridges. You know, every person you meet comes across your path for a reason, every single person. And, um, you know, when we give gratitude, we don't have to celebrate them. We don't have to kiss their feet. But we just appreciate more and complain less, we actually receive miracles more. You know, they, they tend to find us. So I don't know. I believe you can bring the spiritual aspect to the paranormal. The paranormal is spiritual anyway. That's what kills me. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, how can you not talk about psychic mediumship when you're here hunting for an unseen human being? Come on. <laughs> Drives me nuts. Uh-huh. Okay, we're going to switch it up here. Outside of the paranormal or anything we've talked about today, what kind of nerd are you? That's very important. The the biggest question of the evening. What kind of nerd? Okay, so there's different levels of nerdism. Okay, so this became a thing because I encourage my kids at school, you know, I'm a teacher, to to be a nerd at something. I encourage them to be at least several different kinds of nerd. You know, mm. you could replace that word with geek, I guess, yeah. if that if that makes it more meaningful. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just what are your what are your passions that maybe would surprise us that we don't we wouldn't know about April Claxton? So I love reading fiction, stupid fiction. <laughs> um, I actually Rob Demarest from Ghost Hunters International mm-hmm. got me into reading the Midnight um, Texas books. There's three of them. And um, it's by the same author, I believe it's Charlene Harris, who wrote all the True Blood books that were that was on HBO. Hmm. And he's like, you need to read more books that aren't self-help because I unfortunately am a hoarder with self-help books. <laughs> and and I did. I, that's that balance, you know, and I started reading it. And then he got me into this other book called The Demoness by Thomas, I can't even pronounce it, Snigoski. But, you know, I love reading kind of fiction about the world that I live in. So I love that. Um, perfumes. I'm a huge perfume. I don't know if you'd call it a geek, but I love perfumes and purses. Yeah. Geek and nerd don't really fit with perfume and purses, but, but I get it. it. Could. I think if there's some <laughs> girls listening, they would totally understand oh, the yeah. struggle. Um, what else? You know what? I love movie makeup. I've always played with makeup since I was little. Um, I've always done makeup around Halloween time for myself, my family. Now my daughter does it. She's actually starting a um, a Hollywood a movie high school. So I love. Shut up. No, she's crazy. She's amazing. Yeah, and it's like some kids are in their room like knitting or drawing, and Maddie's like creating latex that's peeling her nose open. <laughs> um, it's crazy. She has an awesome Instagram. It's called Maddie Massacre. But it, yeah, all her pictures, like her forehead, you know, falling out. It's like some moms are like, whoa, you're proud of that? I really am, you know, that's because adorable. so many, how many of us at, I'm 39, you know, how many of us at 45 or 50 still don't know what we want to be when we grow up? So, yeah, so I love movie makeup, special effects way before it was a thing. You know, now it's like there's so many, they have face off the show now. And mm-hmm. I mean, I, I guess that's it. I love Disney World. I love Disney. Yeah, I'm a big Disney person. I can go to Disney all the time. How far is Disney from you? Three hours. 
Well, that's not too bad if you just like are itching for a Disney trip. Yes, it is awesome. It Disney is so packed now, even on their off season, it's so packed. Um, I've been going since I was a little mouseketeer. You know, Disney's awesome. It's just because it's like the mad, most magical place on earth. You know, you just go, you get lost, you feel like a kid again. Totally feeds your inner child. When I went to Disney World, I was in um, seventh grade, I think. And Aww. it was the time when um, you're too cool for everything and so you roll you your eyes really and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, I think my family probably wanted to um, smack me the whole time that we were there. But I do remember it being very cool. Yeah, you definitely have to go back. It has changed a lot. So tell us, like... Because I'm sure there's important things that that we have not even come close to hitting. But tell us, you know, what services you provide. And you said you have some books. And and tell us if there's any events coming up that you want people to know about. And uh, just, you know, fill us in on all that. So the wild, wacky world of April is, um, you know, I do a lot of different things. And really, whether it's energy work or readings, it's all the same. So I do psychic mediumship. I actually refer to myself as a channel. Um, I only have to say psychic medium so you understand it, but really I'm a channel. You know, I have a big mouth. I've always gotten in trouble in school for talking too much. Now I understand why. So in readings, I do a lot of half hour, 45 minute and hour readings at paranormal events. I normally do 20, 30 minute readings. Um, And what I do is I hold the space for your guides, your loved ones, and your angels to speak to you. I always say that they're going to tell you what you need to hear, not always what you want to hear. Um, It is through me. It's not of me. Please do not kill the messenger. And the hour normally will fly by extremely fast. And then I do a lot of energy work because everything is energy. So each of us actually holds extra energy, emotions we've not processed, we hold them in our bodies. And that actually can block chakras. So chakras are non-physical energy centers in our bodies. We all have them. And when they become blocked, depending on which one it is, it does affect that part of our body and that part of our life. So I do a lot of meditation. I do a lot of workshops. I'm huge into empathy. I am an empath. Most people out there nowadays that are tapped in, tuned in, turned on, may not be mediums, but they are intuitive and a lot of them are empaths. So I actually wrote, I have an amazing, um, it's called Love Your Inner Empath. It's a workbook. It's on Amazon, barnesandnoble.com. It's on my website. Um, The foreword was done by an amazing celebrity medium in the UK by the name of Barry John. I have Anthony Maraca, Christopher Moon, bunch of different guys that actually endorsed it and they wrote inside of the book. But, you know, being an empath is really not easy. You know, a lot of people feel that it's a curse. It's feeling the exact emotions of other living beings, including the earth. So we take on all of that emotion. We feel it. And a lot of us can feel depression. It can wear us down. So if you don't know, A, that you're an empath, and then you don't know how to deal with that, it really can affect your life. So the workbook really is to break it down. What is it um, to kind of get your brain flowing? And then there's a whole section with tools and tips um, and how to handle being an empath because it really is a gift. And I do a radio show. I do my own show. Um, used to have it on CBS. Now I'm not as dedicated. So it is Spirit Posse Radio. It is on Blog Talk. This upcoming Sunday, what is today? July 6th? right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I think by the time that your listeners are hearing this, it's going to be after, but this upcoming Sunday, you'll have to hear it in the archives. I'm actually going to be interviewing Scott Grunwald, who's crazy, who I love in the paranormal field. I've interviewed Christopher St. Booth. Um, I, on the CBS show, I did a lot of work with Melody Beattie, Gabrielle Bernstein, who does Spirit Junkie. You know, so it's another outlet for me to run my mouth and interview some amazing people. (laughs) And I do workshops. I do a lot of workshops. Um, And I did. I've written four books now. One of my favorites is my children's book. And it's called Good Night Just the Same. It's been endorsed by MTV Network. And 
it really is about the moon tucking each of us in just the same, no matter what our family looks like, you know, because nowadays there's so many kids that are in foster systems and they have two mommies or they have two daddies or they just have one dad, you know, and mom's not in the picture anymore. So it's a, it's a children's book that makes any child, no matter what their family makeup is, feel okay you know, to be in the family that they're in, as long as a family comes from love. So that's what what the book is about. I think that's pretty much it. And I do all the paranormal stuff, tons of paranormal stuff. We actually are doing a road tour. Um, Carissa Fleck and myself, Carissa Fleck has uh, best known for the Horsefly Chronicles, Demons in Seattle case. Um, we're doing a road tour leaving South Florida, going up to Savannah. We're probably going to hit a few places in Florida. And then we're going up to Maryland to do a radio show. We're going to hook up with Nikki Para Unnormal, who's we're doing this sleepless nights paranormal, the three of us. And then we're going to spend some time at this home in Virginia, which is a rape murder case. So, you know, it's, it's going to be pretty um, interesting and important. But that's kind of like a mouthful. You are seriously busy. <laughs> I, I am. And I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. I have people that help me out. You know, if somebody helped me I, and on a business level, not so great. You know, can I do all this stuff? Yes. So I have people that help me out uh, with other things. You know, there's a lot of work I need to do with the website. And, you know, it is a lot of work because, you know, putting together one radio show is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So people go to the movement within.com, right? Or spirit. Posse.net. They go to the movementwithin.com. They can go to spiritposse.net. Um, Spirit Posse really is under the umbrella of the movement within because we really are this amazing spirit, uh, you know, the human species. You know, we are mind, body, and soul. We are spiritual beings having a really crazy human experience. So the spirit posse are people like you and I that know that there's something spiritual going on and we are always kind of seeking whatever that is, whether it's our own spiritual path or paranormal stuff, you know, we really are like a posse. So yeah, they can go to spiritposse.net. Awesome. You have, I, I love your energy. I'm telling you. And, and you are so fun to follow on Facebook. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I mean, really when a video pops up, I'm like, Oh, there's a video. I, I'm, you know, making my dinner or whatever. And I plop my phone over there in the corner. Thank you. Um, I normally apologize the first few minutes because nine times out of 10, my hair and my makeup is not done. <laughs> and you know, I think that's so okay. You know, way too many people. Yes. It's important when you're doing an event, you represent yourself, but my God, we are all people. We all have family. We all have, you know, jobs. We all, it's important. If you've got a few minutes to share a positive message, who gives a rat's behind if your hair and your makeup is done? You right. know, show up, hold the space, give the message. I would love for you to do some live stuff. Yeah. Live is kind of scary. And, you know, I, <laughs> I have a, I have a face for podcasting. Really? That's funny. <laughs> You're a cutie. <laughs> Well, thank you. You rock. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You're listening to the Big Seance Podcast with Patrick Keller. Look for us on iTunes and be sure to check out BigSeance.com for more discussion. Welcome to the audio version of Spectral Edition. I'm Tim Prossel. I have two ghost reports this time. They're both about haunted railroads, but they're also articles that feature a section in which a witness to the ghost speaks for himself. So I'll try to do my best with this. The first article comes from the Leavenworth Weekly Times, a newspaper from Kansas, and it was published on August 8th of 1878. The headline is A Phantom Train on the Kansas Pacific. Edwardsville is 12 miles west of Kansas City on the KP Road and has a haunted house and has been the theater of many mysterious sights and sounds. But the following, which occurred in daylight and to which there are a dozen eyewitnesses, is one of the most remarkable occurrences on record. Mr. Timmons, our informant, is one of the most substantial farmers and reliable men in Wyandotte County. Edwardsville, July 31st. 1878. 
Last Tuesday morning, the section men on the KP Road on my farm, seeing the storm coming up very fast, got their hand car on the track and started full speed for Edwardsville. They had run but a little ways when the entire crowd at the same time saw coming around the curve east of Edwardsville what they supposed to be a locomotive at full speed. They jumped down and took their car off the track as fast as possible when they saw it was not a locomotive. Whatever it was came down the track giving off a volume of dense smoke with occasional flashes resembling a headlight in the center of the smoke. It came three-fourths of a mile from where they first saw it, then turned off the track at a pile of cordwood, went around it once, then went off in a southwesterly direction through a thick wood. The section men came running to my house, evidently much frightened and bewildered by what they saw. What was it? J.F. Timmons. This next one I find very touching um, and kind of disturbing because I don't know that there's actually a ghost here, but there is very clearly a haunted man. It was published in the St. Landry Clarion newspaper from Louisiana on June 13th, 1891. The headline is An Engineer's Illusion. In consequence of accident, he saw ghosts on the track. Talking about ghosts on railroad tracks, said the engineer as he mopped his brow with a piece of dry waste. I believe in them. Why so? Well, I killed a man once. That is, my engine killed him, and, and I can't get rid of him. Haunts you, does he? Not exactly, but I can't get him out of my memory. It happened on the old Brunswick and Western Railroad. I had taken a young man, a tramp, on the engine with me. He was a northern man who had been south for his health and had got broke in Florida. He was going home to die, he said, and asked me to give him a lift. I was sorry for him and granted his request with pleasure. The fellow had consumption, and the jolting of the engine resulted in a hemorrhage. I wasn't noticing the man when I heard a shriek, and then out of the cab he tumbled and then under the engine, I heard the wheels pass over him and grind his bones to powder. After that, whenever we would reach that spot, I seemed to hear a shriek and then the grinding of the wheels on human bones. I couldn't dispel the illusion to save my life. On one occasion, the fireman swore that he saw the man picking up his bones along the track. But of course there was nothing in that. But for six years afterward, as long as I remained on the road, I imagined I could hear the shriek and feel the engine jump when we got to that place. I suppose it was all imagination, but I I couldn't help it all the same. <sighs> What a sad story there. It feels almost like a work of fiction, but my hunch is it's not a work of fiction. You've been listening to the audio version of Spectral Edition. I'm Tim Prossel. I have close to 300 of these ghost reports, and I post one each Wednesday on my website. The name of the website? The Merry Ghost Hunter. I hope you stop by. Thanks for joining us for the Big Seance Podcast. We'd better get back to the table while there's still some candlelight left. In the U.S. iTunes store, I received two fabulous five-star reviews recently. Gandalf505 says, Great show. Patrick Keller's voice is nothing short of amazing. Wow, thank you. Sounds like I'm listening to a paranormal news broadcast. Keep up the good work. Uh, AIM X4754. I think that's probably how you'd say that name. AIM X4754 describes the podcast as a wonderful podcast. I love this podcast. I think there's like five exclamation points there. I love all of the topics discussed and all of the information that is given by the interviews. Patrick is amazing and does an exquisite 
job. Oh my gosh. Exquisite job keeping the podcast interesting and a lot of fun to listen to. You make my work day fly by. Thank you for taking time to make this delightful podcast. You are the best. And my eyes aren't so great, but I think there's like another eight or nine exclamation points. Wow. So Gandalf and aim X. Thank you so much. Sometimes podcasters aren't exactly a a fan of hearing their own voice. I've for the most part gotten over it as a teacher, but um, I certainly appreciate you helping out with that confidence a little bit there. Thanks for the iTunes reviews. Um, Anybody could go to iTunes and subscribe and, and write reviews and it helps us out here. It helps people find our show at big We've had a few additions to the reading in your dreams discussion that several of you have uh, contributed to over the last few years. Maddie says, I searched if it was normal to be able to read in dreams. However, my situation is much different from this. In my dreams, I'm able to read and go about my daily life with my friends. I can go through comments on pictures on any social media. And since your questions are similar to mine, I would like to know if other people have the same questions as me. And actually, I couldn't remember if I'd read this one on a previous episode. So if you if you're hearing this again, I apologize. But if you have... A response for Maddie, feel free to find that post on bigseance.com and, and chat it up. Trevor, a few days later, says, well, I have dreams as well, and I remember some settings when I re-enter, but most of the settings are not places I have ever been, nor maybe places on this planet in creation. And that's interesting. I like that this post keeps getting comments and dialogue going over reading in your dreams. I want to give a shout out to several people, but I'll start with Phil war. I think that's how Phil says his name. I'm sorry if it's not Phil of beyond reality, paranormal out of the UK. Also Corbin slasher, who is a brand new paranerd and listener. And even though this is dangerous, you know, giving a list of names that I would like to thank because there's so many of you that are always helpful and supportive and helping me out. But um, recently, Chris Walker, Lena and John, Nicolette Campbell, Jana Corbell, Jeffrey Fishbach, Claire Broad, Vicki Cosner, Karen Dahlman, Gothic Gord Girl, Maduri Pavamani, Candy Burke, Aaron Hunter, K.K. Allen, Diane Student, Linda Salvin, Lucian Wolf, Jen and Tonica, Julaine, Sam Haynes, Alice Brierly, Anne Francis Scott, Anthony Leone, Morena Blue, Diane Goff, Josiel Lorenzo, Sarah Stone, June P., the handle Haunted Houses on Twitter, Glenn Trust, and Society13 which is a podcast network. Thank you for all the recent Twitter love and retweeting. And as I said, there probably needed to be a lot more people on this list, but really I had to stop somewhere. And so maybe we will do this again soon, but a lot of you have been very supportive lately. Twitter activity is really picked up. So thanks for all the retweets. Please consider sharing the podcast with a friend, sharing on Facebook, Twitter, or whatever social media sandbox you like to play in. And as always, help someone get subscribed to the show today. How about, once again, one of the new directories where you can subscribe to the Big Seance podcast is on iHeartRadio. We've been there for a couple of weeks now, and I've been very anxiously uh, waiting to see how many people are introduced to the Paranerd world of the Big Sounds podcast? And I've actually heard from a few people who have contacted me in the last week or two saying, hey, cool, found you on iHeartRadio. And that was really cool to see. So I'd really like to hear from you if you found us on iHeartRadio. Or even if you're a regular listener, 
but you'll now be tuning into the show via iHeart because maybe it's something you already utilize. So let me hear from you. I'd like to know. I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, I've got some things to pack and get ready for my trip to Kansas City. Um, So everybody have a great week. And for those of you who still believe it's summer, I hope you're enjoying every last moment of it. Peace out. For show notes, including links to anything we may have mentioned in this episode, visit bigseance.com. Just click on the Big Seance Podcast logo or find it in the menu. You can also find and subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. Do you have any comments or feedback? Go to bigseance.com slash feedback to learn how to get your voice in a future show. Or you can call my feedback line, 7755-TELL-ME. That's 775-583-5563. Interested in learning how to promote and share the podcast? Go to bigseance.com slash share. Thank you so much for listening. Unfortunately, it's time to blow the candles out, but we'll see you and light them again next time.